Hi science students. Today we're going to start out our first science unit by thinking about the question, what is science? If I asked you this question, what would you say? What exactly is a person doing when they study science or carry out scientific research? Well, you might answer that science involves looking at or studying the physical world around us. And by physical world, I mean that you're investigating things in our world that you can actually see or touch or smell or hear or taste. You might also tell me that there are many different aspects of the world that a scientist might want to study. For example, if someone is interested in studying living things, and I mean any type of living thing, such as plants, animals, viruses, and bacteria, then they would be working in the field of biology. On the other hand, some scientists look at the characteristics of different substances and how different substances interact. In this case, they are involved in the study of chemistry. If a scientist is interested in forces or energy or movement, whether here on Earth or in the wider universe, that would involve the study of physics. Another scientist might want to investigate physical processes on Earth, like the water cycle or the eruption of volcanoes. Such scientists are interested in Earth sciences. But even though scientists can study many, many different aspects of the world around us, they all have something in common. For the most part, they follow a process called the scientific method. So what is the scientific method? The scientific method is simply a series of steps that scientists use to find answers to questions about the world around us. The first step in the scientific method involves figuring out what you're curious about and would like to investigate. So you begin by looking around or observing the world and finding something that makes you wonder or ask a question. For example, you could ask yourself, why do birds fly south in the winter? Or does ice always float on the top of water? Or is it possible to grow plants on the International Space Station? One important point though, for you to be following the scientific method, your question must be one that can be investigated by doing an experiment. As your next step, before you do anything else, you need to do some research to find out what is already known about your topic and question. When doing research, you can find information in many different places. You can look in books, on the internet, uh, in media like videos or magazines. If possible, you can even talk to experts in the field. The reason for doing research is that you want to see what is already known about your topic because that will help you figure out what you're going to do. It will also stop you from just repeating an experiment that someone else has already done. Once you've done your research, you need to make a hypothesis. Now, hypothesis is just a fancy word for prediction. You're predicting what you think an answer to your question might be. 
Now, you never just pull this prediction out of thin air. It needs to be well thought out and reasonable. So to come up with your hypothesis, you think about what you already know about this topic, about your own observations, and about what you found out in your research. So you've asked your question and made your prediction. Now you have to set up or design an experiment to test your hypothesis. Designing an experiment includes coming up with a procedure. If you're not sure what a procedure is, it's basically like a recipe for the experiment. It's a set of step-by-step -step instructions that you follow when you do the experiment. At this point, you also need to decide what you are going to observe or measure when you do the experiment, because this is where your data will come from. The next step is for you to do your experiment by following your procedure step by step. Remember to record your observations or measurements, otherwise you won't have any data. Fun fact, the word data is actually plural. You use it when you're talking about multiple observations or measurements. If you only want to talk about one observation or measurement, you use the word datum. There's an important point that I wanted to make about the steps of the scientific method. So here you can see a flow chart that contains the steps of the scientific method that we've talked about so far. Up until now, we've been talking as if scientists always follow the steps of the scientific method in the same order, one after another after another. But that is not always the case. For example, maybe you ask a question about the world and then you start to carry out your research, but then based on your research, you realize that you could have asked a better question. So you would go back to the previous step and rephrase your question before doing more research. Or if your research is all done, you might go directly to making a hypothesis. Another possible scenario, maybe you go through all of the steps in order. For example, maybe you observe the world and ask a question, you carry out research, you make a hypothesis, but when you are designing your experiment, you realize that you're not happy with your prediction. So in that case, you would need to go back and rewrite your hypothesis before moving back on and finishing designing your experiment. The key point here is that you don't always follow the exact same steps in the exact same order from start to finish. Let's assume for now that you're happy with your question and your hypothesis and you're happy with the design of your experiment and you've carried it out. Now it's time to analyze your data, which basically means that you're looking to see if there are any patterns or trends. You also want to see if your results support your hypothesis, which is just a fancy way of saying, do your results fit with or seem to back up your prediction? Now, all the way through the process so far, you're thinking about whether or not your experiment provides a fair test of your hypothesis. And as a scientist, you do want a fair test. If you say it was a fair test, this means that you had set up your experiment so that one outcome isn't any more likely than another. If you don't have a fair test, this means that your results are biased, making them difficult to interpret. That's bad. You also want your data to be reliable. Reliable is just another word for trustworthy. If we can repeat our experiment and get the same pattern of results time after time, that means we can be more confident that we've done things right, and we can feel that any patterns in our data reveal something true about the world. As part of your analysis, you will need to organize your data using tables or graphs. 
You might also look at measures of central tendency, such as averages or means for the data. After analyzing your data, you can take one of two possible pathways. So that's two. Just thought I'd emphasize that. So here we are again with the flow chart of the scientific method that I showed you earlier. And you can see that after analyzing your data, you can follow one of two pathways. One pathway moves you on to the next stage of the scientific method, and we'll talk about that in a moment. The other pathway wraps around and returns you to one of the earlier stages in the scientific method. Let's look at option one. You've analyzed your data and you've asked yourself three questions. Was your experiment well designed and was it a fair test of your hypothesis? Did you see definite patterns or trends in the data and do these patterns or trends support your hypothesis? And finally, have you repeated the experiment and have you gotten the same results, meaning that your results are reliable? In this case, you can answer yes to all of those questions. And in that case, you are a very happy scientist because yahoo, you get to go on directly to the next step in the scientific method. Now, assuming that you were able to answer yes to all of those questions, you get to move on to the final stage of the scientific method where you communicate your results to an audience. This can be done in a number of ways, either by writing up a report for people to read or by doing an oral presentation. Sometimes though, after analyzing your data, when you go to ask yourself those three questions, you have to answer no to one or more of them. For example, it might be that you figure out there was a problem with how you designed your experiment. Maybe it wasn't a fair test of your hypothesis. Or you might find that you don't have any meaningful patterns or trends in the data, or if you do find any patterns or trends, they don't support your hypothesis. Finally, you might repeat the experiment and get different results, meaning that your results are not reliable. In any case, this means you have more work to do because you have to go back and make some changes. So in this case, you need to backtrack and try to figure out what went wrong. And this is why we have the arrow looping back to earlier steps in the scientific method. Now, this might mean that you need to go all the way back to the beginning and think about a new question. Or it might mean that you think there was a problem with how you designed or set up your experiment. Maybe you think everything else was fine, but that there was a problem with something that happened when you were actually doing the experiment. Whatever the case, you will have to loop back to look at earlier stages in the process and fix whatever went wrong. And there you have it, the scientific method. This has been a Dr. D production.